M0 FXB ham radio diary. M0 FXB, yes, I was having a chat on one Charlie earlier and someone said something about a program called a remote hams for controlling any radio. So here we are. So I found this uh, link here by the 7240 Club, uh, which, which I thought I'd quickly read through it. So it basically says, Welcome to Remote Hams, your online remote-based community. It looks all free to me. Enjoy operating remote amateur transceivers or more by joining our community. Don't miss the rare DX. Um, you may never have a chance to hear. Test your own signal propagation and you are being heard in DX location. Multiple operator support allows the, for new methods of contesting nets around table remote operators. So basically you can link to other people's radios or you can link to your own radio. So I thought, well, that's quite cool. So number one, sign up and register. Um, you will then click to sign up. Use your call sign as your username. Email you back with verification. Download RC for client. Um, minimum requirements here. I'm using Windows 10. Log in, select a remote, and enjoy. But the other thing you can do is you can select a server as well. So it all looks good. So I'm going to click Enter Remote Hams here. And so I'm already a member. So I should be able to just log into that. So, uh, but let's just click the sign up process. Click here to sign up, and then you can let's have a look here. Let's have a look at the sign up. So I'll go to download a client. Oh, I'm already logged in. That's the problem. So that's okay. You can do that. Just log in, create an account with remotehams.com. Remember, remote hams. Here's the the link: remotehams lowercase dot com create an account and log in then download your client so the client is more what you would use to view so you you're not a server you're a client so we'll download that and I've got a link here somewhere so here we are at the uh, sort of setup for the client so let's download that and then we'll do the server so client we'll click that And you'll get a thing appear. Allow. There you are. And then it appears at the bottom. Oh, I clipped it twice, but it's okay. Keep just one of them. Let it run. Click it. Straightforward download. Click yes. It's an XE. Let that load up. Accept. Next. So we're going to just install that and when it's finished it will open up a little window where we have to log in I will log in I am brand new to this I'm sort of learning as I video we've got the 705 here ready to try and link when I do the server but even if I don't right we're going to click finish and run it's going to ask me to log in you'll see the window so this is the client. So client means you're using the software to to link to radios, basically. All right, let's go back to that. So let's try and log in. Okay, so let me log in. So, I, as I said, I've never used it. We'll get to full screen. Let's click one. I don't even know how to connect, I'll be honest. Let's right click, add to favorites, increase fonts. Ah, I double clicked it and it's clicking, connect. And we've got a little thing here. Welcome to my remote UHF VHF station, radio 9700. Oh, there you are. You must request club membership before controls can be allowed. Click OK. And then, so, request club membership. Please wait for approval by remote controller. So there you are. So there's club membership for that one. So that's pretty good, isn't it? Now, I've got the volume up. So, you get the idea. Now let's... Um, have a little play. Let me know how you get on with it. Uh, connecting to different stations. Now, what I'd like to know is how to disconnect. 
Uh, and then, yeah, we could try and connect to another one. So I'll work that out. Right, just pause a minute. Right, sorry about that. I thought I paused, but I hadn't. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, right, disconnect is here. Disconnect. There you go. Let's choose another one. Let's double click this one. Yeah. All star link. Look, you can TX. Again, you have to request TX permission. There you go. So that's good. It's all very organized, but you get the idea. Give it a go. I'm now going to just disconnect from this, and I'm going to run the server and show you about actually connecting your own radio. I suppose you can become one of these lists of people. So let's exit this for now. Exit. I'm going to run the server side. So we're looking here. Look, server. I'm going to choose the top one. Uh, let's have a look. So yes, you choose the top one. Keep. Click it. Now with the server, you're going to need to download the USB driver for whichever radio you've got. So I'm going to try it with the 705. So, right. When it says this message on Windows 10, don't run. Just click here, more info. And then you take the risk, but run anyway. Click yes. Um... Accept the terms. Next, next, install. Finish, and we want it to start the server. And then we'll have a little go at setting it up. So let's log in again. Log in, like so, discard that, discard that, uh, it says here, yeah. right, virtual remote, that's interesting, full remote cat controller, well, I'm just going to click that, uh, and then just click, save and restart, now does it restart the whole computer, right, that's it. So now we've got to work out the server settings. So I'll come back with that in a minute. Fine. The USB driver for the ICOM 7300, and this is the what you'll be looking for prolific USB to serial com. Then just go to the radio and go menu, set, go to connectors, let's just sit, go to CIV, and uh, let's go to board rate, I'll, I'll keep it on auto, and look we've got 94H there, so we're going to use that and the radio has got a USB cable which um, we've used many times and, and the server is on the computer that that connects to. So the server section, I'm not really going to set this up, I haven't really got time for that but I'm just going to go through it and then you, let me, you play and let me know how you get on with it. Let's have a look here once it runs. There you go. If it does that, click don't r click um, more info. Then run anyway. Like so, we do it live. So you learn. So the server part is what you connect to your actual radio. So you can become one of the radios that people connect to. So click install. And then there's a setup. 
I don't think the setup is complicated, you just need to get it right. So finish. <coughs> so let's find server. Right, it's opened up straight away. So see the way it's opened up straight away? Now what you do, when you go to options, you've got audio, radio, and other device configuration. So, audio. I think you leave everything, but you can select speakers and microphone here. Otherwise, I don't think you change anything. Server, same again. I don't think there's anything you actually change on that. Publishing, I put in my, you know, my call sign and my radio name and things like that. That was what I changed. Server, didn't change anything there. Audio, okay. So you save and it's all, every time you save it restarts, look. And it's trying to connect. So then the other one, I think the most important one is the radio configuration. So for a like ICOM 7300, you collect, select 7300, definitely select ICOM, otherwise you can't set the 94 here, the CIV address. And then uh, the board rate 19200 I set, put yours, and then the, obviously when the radio is connected, you can select the COM port that shows in your device manager. And uh, so obviously to download the driver first for your ICOM 7300 or for that particular radio. When you save and restart, it will do this, but it will run further, and you will show up then as one of the server radios. And then what they need is your public IP address, which you can get, you know, by just typing public IP address into Google. And then your the local IP address of of your radio. So the local IP address of what the radio is connected to. You could go sort of CMD. CMD here, command prompt, and just put in IP config, so IP config, like so. And then the, see the IPv4 address here is triple one. So that you've got to imagine that your IP address is, is where your house is, your address of your house. But your IPv4 address, your local IP address, that's the actual IP address of of the equipment that you want it to connect to, you know. So it's triple one. It's triple one here. The default one tends to be your router sort of default local IP. Your broadband router. It's not your public IP, but it's the sort of local address it uses. Um, so there you go. Give it a go. Let me know how you get on. Should be a a bit of fun and seven free. All the best.